Now I know last week's video was very heavily math involved, so here's a cute puppy to make up for it. Say hello. This week we're gonna take a break from the math and learn how to make our own pinholes, so stay tuned. So what is it gonna take for you to make your own pinhole? Well, we're gonna need some sort of material uh, that's rigid enough that it's not gonna be super fragile, but also thin enough that we're gonna get a good angle of coverage. So I use this tooling foil, and I like to use brass. Um, brass, I prefer brass to things like aluminum and copper because aluminum is a little bit tougher than brass, so it's a little bit harder to work with, and copper does oxidize over time. So I think brass is a good compromise. Now, this roll here comes in, what is this, 12 inches by three feet? This is like a lifetime supply of pinhole material. So you cut off a little piece like this, and you know it's got a little bit of a curl to it because this one's wrapped up in a roll. So you can flatten this out. Um, you don't really don't need this much. So you can, you can get some nice little piece here. And this stuff is easy enough to be cut with scissors. So I just cut off you know, an inch square. And we're not really worried about the size or where we put this pinhole, because usually what I do is I, I make the pinhole and then I, sen I will center it to whatever I'm attaching it to. Um, here's an example of a pinhole you can buy. Uh, there's a little tiny hole in there. I don't know if you can see it. If I bring over this light board, it's a real tiny hole. So this is a half millimeter pinhole, and that's extremely tiny. Um, so we're going to get try and get something close to that. Uh, which is some simple, simple tools. So some other things we're going to need are we're going to need something to make the actual pinhole in this material. So we're going to need a pin. This is a sewing needle. And this is actually a really thick sewing needle, so I'm not going to be using this one, but hopefully it shows up a little bit better on camera. I'm going to be using this one, which is a lot thinner. And just to give you an idea of how thin these are, these are standard sewing needles, so it gives you a good idea of what size they're supposed to be. Now I'm gonna use this little uh, scale here. And this is by no means a precision instrument, but let's just see what it says. So this says that this is 0.58 millimeters, whereas this other one here is 0.99. So basically one millimeter thick. So this is, you know, even though it looks small on the screen, this is quite big in terms of pinhole uh, photography and pinhole making. So we're gonna set that aside. Now, this is somewhat difficult to work with because you know the, the back of the, the pin, the sewing needle, even though it's not sharp, it's, it's hard to push in and you know, it's just not comfortable to work with because it's, it's poking back into your finger if you're trying to make a hole. So you get yourself you know, your, your, favorite, your favorite beverage here and you pour yourself a glass Set that off to the side. And you're gonna take the cork of uh, either like a wine bottle or a scotch bottle. And I like the, uh, the sort of the, the hard alcohol ones because there's a hard stop on one end uh, versus a, a wine cork. You, 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 might be, you might push the pin all the way through. Um, so you just get some, something to hold the pin with here. And we're just going to push that in. So now we have our little self's little pinhole tool. And if you want, you want to try and get this as, as straight up and down as possible. That's a little better. So now we have like a little tool here, which is going to make it easier for us to press without hurting fingers. And it gives us a little bit more control because this is wider around so we can rotate because we're going to be pressing and rotating as we push into here. So the surface that I'm working on, this is actually a big piece of uh, foam board 
so it's not a kitchen table or anything so that it's a big you know piece of foam board that I cut off as a working surface because what's going to happen is as we push into this we don't want the the uh, pin to get damaged and we don't want we want the brass to kind of have somewhere to go uh, and we don't want it to be a hard hard punch against uh, something hard like wood or uh, a normal table surface so What we're going to do is we're going to pick a spot and we're going to, as best we can, with slight pressure, slowly start to push and rotate. Now, we don't have to push it so that it actually goes all the way through. We can just get it so that there's a small dimple in, in the material we're working with. And if I hold this up to the light, there might be a little bit of a hole there, but nothing much. Um, so we have a small dimple. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the direction we were pushing the pinhole. We're going to turn it over, and we're going to get some fine grit sandpaper. So I have some sandpaper here. This is 300 grit. This is 600 grit. So with the, with the coarser of the two, we're just going to... try and sand down the indentation until it's almost flush with the surface. And the idea is that what happens is we're, we have this, this pin here and we're pushing down into this material. And as we dent this or puncture it, you know, this, this end, if we imagine there's actually a hole here now, these fringes are sort of protruding out of the underneath. And we don't want that. We want this to be as flat as possible all the way across. Uh, because as we're gonna discuss in a later video, that's gonna affect, the thickness of this material is gonna affect the angle of view of our, of our pinhole camera. So we want this as thin as possible to give us the, the most angle of view to work with. So, We've sanded that down a little bit. We can sand it down a little bit more. So it's relatively flat. Um, but one of the most important things about a pinhole design is getting the aperture perfectly circular. So we want a perfectly circular aperture. Now, how do we investigate what shape this is? Well. I have a good feeling that this is not exactly circular at this point in time because we've just been pushing and turning with this pin. But um, they're like, they, they sell these little tiny LED magnifiers. You can, uh, you can turn these on, they have a little light on them and you can actually look down into here, uh, focus and see whether or not it's actually a circle or not. And I'll, I'll try and take a, take a picture of this and show you exactly how crappy this is. It's very jagged on the edges uh, and it's no good at all. So the next step is going to be very, very gradually uh, opening this hole up. And we're not too much worried about the size. We have a somewhat of an idea of how thick this needle is. So if we push this all the way through, we're going to get something around that, that 0 0.5, 0 0.6 range. Um, but right now, the, the key is to get this as circular as possible. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to push, you know, kind of rest the needle in the hole, and we're just going to keep doing what we're doing, which is just slight pressure and turning. And then what we can do is we can turn it over, and we can do slight pressure and turning from the other end as well. So again, the key is just slowly putting light pressure and rotating. You can even turn it this way and just kind of let gravity do the work, but you just want to do the twist. And then you can turn it over and do it from the other side. And what we're doing is we're just trying to get, we've already made the opening. Now we just want the opening as round as possible. Because remember, all our equations from the previous video are based off of circular apertures.
And again, we can check, we can check this using our handy dandy uh, microscope here. And if you don't have access to something like this or a magnifying glass, you can always check uh, with like a flatbed scanner. You can scan this to see how round the, the hole is. So from here, it's just a matter of sanding this down. Now maybe with the higher grit sandpaper. And we want this to be thin, but not fragile. So we want this to be thin enough, but we don't want to go obviously all the way through the material. So something like that should, uh, should do pretty well. Now, as far as the actual size of the pinhole, you know, we can use a scanner in order to determine the size and kind of measure the pixels across. If we have some sort of reference point or if we know what resolution we're scanning at, we can use uh, DPI dots per inch uh, and then scale it in Photoshop so that we know exactly what we're dealing with. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's gonna, get us, that's gonna get us pretty close. Now remember, perfection is the enemy of good enough. So even though we have this nice tiny hole here, you know, could it be smaller? Could it be more optimal? Um, yeah, it probably could. Uh, if, you, if you want that, then just go with something like this, which was a, which was a laser etched pinhole of a known diameter. So if you want if you want that level of precision, you know these these aren't very expensive. You can buy the pinhole and then you know you can fashion into this is a Hasselblad body cap that I that I use. Um, but it's not that hard either to make your own. I mean, you just need a, a few simple things. You need some sort of uh, hard material, rigid enough that it's able to work with without, without tearing. You don't you, you want to go as thin as possible with as much strength as possible. So you don't want something like aluminum foil which is very thin, but obviously very difficult to work with. So this is a great compromise. So all you need is this, uh, a, the smallest pin you can find, and probably some sort of cork, or if you don't have a cork, you can use uh, like an, one of those old pink uh, erasers, those big fat erasers, or Play-Doh, or any number, number of things, just so you have a little bit more finesse and control over the motion. And we're just making the dimple, we're sanding down the back side to make sure that this material stays thin, and just, gradually working our way um, in, in, into a nice round pinhole. Now, we do want to get accurate size, that, that's going to affect our exposure because our effective f-stop, or aperture, is going to be the focal length of whatever camera we put this in divided by the diameter of this pinhole. So if you have you know, a focal length of 75 and a half a millimeter pinhole, then you have a effective f-stop of 150. So 75 over 0 0.5, 150. So the idea is, you know, it's fun to make these on our own and uh, it's, it's really not that hard to do. I mean, like I said, this, this whole roll costs maybe uh, 12, 13 dollars and it's a lifetime supply of pinhole material. Um, safety pins or sewing needles are extremely inexpensive. And um, yeah, that's all you need. Maybe a little bit of sandpaper, uh, not, too, not too much else. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this little pretty easy DIY tutorial about making your own pinhole. Uh, a little bit less math intensive, just kind of uh, wing it. And uh, until then, until next time, uh, we're going to talk about how we can use a pinhole we've made or a pinhole we've bought to uh, calculate the angle of view and how wide we can go because one of the advantages of pinhole cameras is going to be you're going to get a rectilinear image which means lo lo low distortion or no distortion uh, and you're able to go pretty wide uh, much wider than some of the super wide angle lenses that are available in the market and I don't know if you check the prices lately but the super wides because they need so much glass to bend that light inwards they're extremely expensive uh, to des because they took a lot of research and development to design and the materials are also expensive. So pinhole is a way, great way to go super wide. So we're going to talk about um, the angle of view that uh, a pinhole can make and it's going to be based on the diameter of the pinhole and the thickness of the material we use. Um, 
so it's also good to uh, go with something very thin. And I use this because it tells me that it's 36 gauge, which is a known thickness. Uh, it turns out to be point uh, zero zero five inches, which I think is about 0.127 millimeters thick. So I have a reference point to go off of because I have a known material. A lot of people use soda cans, uh, which are also about the same thickness as this, if you cut open a, a soda can, but I'm not sure of the exact thickness of that material, and I uh, have more faith in something that's manufactured for a specific thickness than something that uh, may vary in thickness. So I hope you enjoy. Um, as always, if you liked what you see, uh, leave some comments down below or comments about other pinhole things you want to see or learn about. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. And I'll, I'll see you next week. So this week's episode was a little bit different than the other ones. And if you liked it, let me know. But don't worry, we'll be back to the blackboard talking about math in no time. And until then, happy shooting. <laughs>